Are we cooking a pig? Then it was raising a lamb, and we using sticks to build and cook it and fire. It's everything very primal. Life gets boring when everything's turned too easy. I think the whole purpose of cooking in this style too is putting yourself in a place where our ancestors were before, not having electricity, not having gas, and you just have to be creative. We're just gonna get these pigs and we're gonna cook tomorrow. They yeah, pick up this morning from Climbing Tree Farm. They are a farm in New Lebanon. Very nice pigs. We're doing so in open fire cooking. It's uh, the Modestos pop-ups. We're gonna butterfly them. So we can open the legs here in the back and the chest. So what I'm doing here, first than anything, when I start opening these guys, I'm marking the union between the ribs and the spine with that little mark when I open it it will crack and separate. And now just I'm basically loosening up the joints. The pigs is flattening up. And also it will be easy for us to season it. Here we're in Cortina, we char one of our favorite chefs who cooks Cambodian. Kisim? This is pa'a, which is fermented pork um, that we're using for our crispy rice dish. Right now I'm just pounding out the meat. We're using it to make a paste and season the crispy rice with. We are now gonna work and marinate for the pig. So what we're gonna use is a palm sugar, galanga, coriander seeds, salt. You guys smell this? We're using the fermented pork, then it has a lot of flavor. Wow, we learn a lot from her. This idea of these collaborations, you mix cultures and to be open, create dishes that are unique. So now what we're gonna do basically is just put paste and like use our hands and rub it all over the places. We're trying to just cover this with a thin layer as we were trying right now. The season is quite salty and strong, so we don't wanna over season the pigs. Then it's just gonna put this in the cooler and the walking over there. So now these pigs are gonna stay here overnight. We'll be taking early first things tomorrow in the morning to put it in the crosses and start to roast them. See you tomorrow night, guys. So we're going to pick up some sticks to build in uh, the structures for cooking tomorrow. Then it's one of the most important part of the prep. That could work. Should be enough. We have some more stick from the structure period we built down in the fire pit. So we should be ready with this. Now then we have all the sticks. It is time to build our structure. The whole purpose of this structure is to hold two pigs that are gonna be in a cross. It's gonna be like a very simple structure with two tripods and one pole crossing from one side to the other one. So basically, we put in some screws here. This is a structure pretty much ready for tomorrow. We test it with a little weight, and since then it's gonna hold our pigs. Pretty much that's it today. Uh, we're just gonna come tomorrow super early in the morning, light the fire, put the pigs on the crosses, and I start cooking. I started to work in kitchens in different restaurants until 2009. Then I had the chance to start to work for Francis Malman in his restaurant in Mendoza. He have kind of taken all these different techniques from the gauchos and the Italian and indigenous people and kind of put it into like a restaurant. Here we are, it's 7.30 a.m. in the morning. Has to get these pigs on the cross and in the structures because we're starting to serve dinner at 5 p.m. Uh, the pigs are gonna take about seven to eight, eight hours to cook. So what we're gonna do now is gonna be build a cross in the back side of this pig where we're gonna keep the, the legs open and the ribs open. So she's using a steel wire to tie the pig to the structure, and then the spine here, attach it to the middle, so when we cook it doesn't fall down. All what we want is the pig to be as open, as butterfly as possible, so we can roast all the meat side, and then we're gonna flip it and finish the skin. How many animals have you roasted like this though? Ballpark. 500, maybe more. Been cooking hot animals for 30 years. Yeah. After finishing high school, uh, I always wanted to cook, but also was interested in chemistry. When I was a little kid, I wanted to be a scientist. Studied chemical engineer for six years, and I learned many, many things. 
but it wasn't the environment that I wanted to be. I did what I really feel that I wanted to do, then it's just uh, cooking. It's a good exercise to uh, slow down to a little bit. I think we're gonna light the fire and start to cook. Now it's fire time, so we're gonna be a build fire over the middle of the fire pit over here, make it nice and hot, and then we're gonna start to push coals and fire as we need to manipulate the heat for cooking those guys. It's not, no, it's not like barbecue, definitely. So now we're just starting the fire, and then we're gonna spread the heat a little bit closer to the pigs and flatter. So we just create radiant heat and we cook them slowly. We manipulate in the fire, depends of how, how much heat they need to be closed. They are upside down because the head is always kind of the hardest part to cook. They're gonna get a little bit more radiant heat down there. and just starting to distribute the heat more evenly. So the pigs start to cook and get nice and warm. We wanna keep the fire flat. We don't wanna build a tall fire because that will be too much heat for the pigs and also for the structures to catch on fire. So now here what it brings, it is some bricks, table plancha, what we call parrisha, and then two pieces of uh, carbon steel that we're gonna use with these cinder blocks to build plancha to cook our rice. This style of cooking is all about moving the heat source and playing around. Moving the fire around will be like the same of manipulating the heat in your gas grill or stuff. Just putting it up and down. One of the sides that we're doing today is this a very summery salad that we love to do. It's a corn salad. It's a classic for us. Grilled corn, tomatoes and mayonnaise. So I find out in cooking it with a, with a husk, uh, it's much better. So the steam keep the moisture. Still get some smoky flavor. Yeah, so until it's a nice color. That's what we're looking for. So now I'm putting these tomatoes, then we're gonna blister char in this plancha. We're gonna rearrange the fire underneath. We are about two hours and a half since we put the pigs up and start the fire. I can start to smell from here the seasoning and the fat and the roasting. As we're cooking, we can see here how the pigs are starting to get some nice brown color but we see this size it has less color than the rest, so that means that this area needs to be a little hotter. So we're just gonna push a little bit more heat. So this pig's been here for about five hours, so it's time to flip them. The pig's instead of be closer to the fire as it is right now, it's gonna be in this side, so the meat is gonna be facing out. So then we're gonna be pushing the fire a little closer, so that will start to make it crispy and cook. As we see here, the pigs like all looks like nice, has a brown color. We see the ribs are starting to peel off, so that means then it's cooked and this is kind of crunchy. This part of the pig, through the skin, you see the fat and the juices of the meat boiling inside. That means then the heat has penetrated all the way and it's cooking nice and evenly. Here's some bubbles from the fat roasting. That's what we're looking, they look pretty good. And now we have three hours. The worst thing that can happen is the thing to fall. That happened before, so <laughs> it always could be fixed. So we're getting clo close to service, so we're finalizing some of the prep that we have left. The corn is looking good and ready to come off, soft inside. You don't wanna also overcook it. It's nice if it still keeps some crunch. These are gonna be peeled and shaved. So then we're gonna be mixing those corn with the tomatoes. Then we char it next to them and season them with a char scallion aioli. Here we are, people is starting to showing up for the band. We just have all the sides ready, the chimichurris and the sauces. As we invite people around 4 p.m. to come and show, you see a little bit of the cooking process and we start to serve around five. Almost ready, you can see the people coming up and starting to have fun. We are about to take down the pig that you see on the left over there. This is nice and steaming and dripping a lot of fat and juices, so that means it's boiling and cooking inside, so it should be nice. What I'm doing now is just breaking down a little bit the pig. Some of the parts of the pigs need to be a little longer for cooking. Some of the parts are ready. Pretty, pretty good. The meat seems tender, nice, flavorful, cook. It has still some texture, it doesn't fall apart, which I like. I think the takeaway is just slow down and be creative and put yourself in a place where you create some challenge, but then you the end products create a lot of happiness for many people. 
think about just life and, and the way that we live and the way that we eat.